Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I look to set up a launch site in Tampico in Mexico and a landing site in the Bahamas for my Orion carrier plane, the centerpiece of the To Mars and Beyond series. And to that end I have to actually travel to Tampico and that's why I tried to use the SR-72 here, a plane that can get places very quickly but that proved a little bit difficult. Um, it's a little bit troublesome to actually take off with the SS-72. This whole thing where it wants to go on its tail initially, no matter how far back I set the landing gear, it still wants to do that for some reason. We are taking off from Brownsville, where my previous launch site for the To Mars and Beyond series was, but I want to relocate. It's not my intention to pretend to be SpaceX or anything, so I want my own launch site. But, well, I'm off to a rough start here. Uh, so anyway, I do keep trying to shift the landing gear back and it doesn't matter. But this time I decided that instead of focusing on the side view in order to avoid a tail strike, I'll just go with the tail view. And so we'll make sure that we stay on the runway, which it is fidgety on that. It is very fidgety. And I also wanted to make sure that despite all the bumps in the runway, that we do not leave the runway ahead of time. You can see I'm fully pitching down right now to make sure that it sticks to the runway and then only right at the end do I pitch up to uh, get as much speed as possible and then it works. So this is my uh, Boca Chica area, area scenery but we are not going to continue launching from it in the future in the To Mars and Beyond series. I head down to Tampico, which is just down the coast, and you can see the basic location here is just south of uh, where we are flying right now, and it sort of looks like this. It has sort of a bay there, and you'll see the bay in the photo scenery that I add. Basically, there's a few steps. We need to add the photo scenery that I got from Ortho 4XP that I used for uh, X-Plane 11, so I downloaded the photo scenery for X-Plane 11, I'm just moving it here uh, and importing it into the game. And then we have to establish the launch pad and the runway. Well, uh, the plane breaks apart because it has a tendency, tendency to do that. It's a troublesome plane, the SR-72. Uh, you have to be very careful, but as it turns out, the fact that it breaks apart is not a problem. Now, in order to create a new group, we just close the uh, you have died dialogue and we just proceed like this. I create a new group for the Tampico area. You have to do that first. And in order to bring up the Kerbal Constructs menu in order to add these things, you have to do Control K. And so I've created this new group called Tampico in this area. And all the other stuff will be relative to that particular transform. And then we spawn the Tampico terrain, which is what you see here. Create this in, well, in many things, but Blender, Unity, etc. And we have to scale it up because I definitely don't want a many kilometer thing in Blender. It is very, it would be very cumbersome to work with. So it's just a flat terrain. It's basically a mesa or a whatever, it's a trapezoidal thing uh, in order to clip into the ground. You can see the sort of edges there. And I move it into the right location. Uh, you can see it's matching the coastline right there. And you can see the sort of bays. I guess they're sort of lakes. I don't know whether they're bays or lakes, but anyway, that's about the right place. And then we make sure the pitch and roll fit properly. And then I place the launch site. This is the launch pad 39, uh, launch complex 39 that comes with the real launch sites pack. Probably still available on space dock it's outdated but it provides the models for Kerbal constructs so that's all we need and so i'm positioning it this location i think is a steelworks it's, it's a big industrial area but there's not a whole lot here so i figure that we could buy it out maybe <laughs> you know i mean it's possible it's possible to turn that into a launch site it, it doesn't have a whole lot going on there and it's basically a swamp. It's got a nice little canal. Uh, it's sort of very similar to Cape Canaveral in a way. It's really an ideal location. I understand there's a lot of aerospace stuff that goes on in Tampico. Not space, but uh, uh, there's uh, some precedent for aerospace things around here. But 
I set up the runway. There's a fairly clear location you can see in the photo scenery there. And I think it's it, it all would work out, darn it, if we wanted to set up a space center here. I suggest it. This is partly in honor of the fact that uh, Squad, the company that made Kerbal Space Program, the original Kerbal Space Program, not managing it now, not doing Kerbal Space Program 2, but the original creators of Kerbal Space Program are located in Mexico. Uh, the, the program is the brainchild of Harvester, who's from Brazil, but he worked for Squad and wanted to make the game, and they let him make the game, and then put their backing behind it. And so, yep figured it's about time they had a launch site here. And here I am positioning the universal spawn point on the launch pad. This is important, otherwise you can't spawn there. Uh, the launch pad physically does not have a spawn point. So 10 pico launch pad, we get to set the max vessel length, the max width, max height, and all that business. And we have to set the site category to rocket pad. RP is a rocket pad. The one next to it is runway. So click, yes, click, click, there we go. Okay, so, and then you can set whether it's uh, any or VAB or SPH focused. And then we have to set a spawn point for the shuttle runway that I imported. So there's just this shuttle landing facility from real launch sites as well. And I set that all up. Uh, I just remember those numbers were commonly used for other launch sites, so I just copied them, just a 9999, that stuff. So, whatever's safest. And then you have to open base in order to be able to use them. So, here we are at the Tampico runway with the SR-72, still rearing up there. But we've got the little marker for your universal spawn point there. I had to double check whether we can tuck it into the surface and it'll still be safe. I decided that probably the SR-72 was not the best thing to use. The T-38 is much easier to fly. So I bring it out and it seems to spawn just fine with the spawn point tucked into the surface. And so we get to go. And one thing I forgot to mention is if you ever tried this sort of thing, you need to enable colliders on the runways. Otherwise your craft will probably clip into it. You know is a choice when you bring out a model whether you want to enable its colliders or not. And here we go, the T-38, much easier to fly than the SR-72. And off we go checking out our launch pad this way, but we'll also bring out a rocket to it to make sure that works. So a little flyover. But I noticed that there seemed to be a duplicate terrain, and that was because you can see there's a uh, there's a second terrain overlapping the first one, and that was because I had previously tried to create this Tampico terrain by moving it from Boca Chica. Instead of flying over, I just tried to move it all the way down from Boca Chica, but that's not a good way to do it. It's better to create a new group after flying down in order to create things closer to the origin point. So I get rid of the duplicate terrain, and I land the plane properly, sort of. Uh, well, good enough. And then we have to check out the launch pad. So VAB, the whole point of this is to get a good location to operate the Orion carrier plane in the To Mars and Beyond series. So I open up the Tempico launch pad, so open base, set launch site, and then there it is. But I had rotated the marker, the universal spawn point, by 90 degrees thinking that was necessary, but it turns out that that was wrong. It's uh, not like the runway marker. You have to make sure to rotate the runway spawn point to make sure it's pointing in the direction of the runway, otherwise your plane will start out in the wrong direction. But for launch pads, unless you have a specific reason, it's best to just keep the heading zero so it's oriented correctly with reference to the VAB. Anyway, here I decided to back off on the super speedy SR-72 and instead use the SR-71 out of Cape Canaveral in order to establish my Bahamas site. So this is taking off from the shuttle landing facility in Cape Canaveral and we get to take a look at Cape Canaveral HD, a much better photo scenery uh, for Kerbal Space Program thanks to Katniss. Uh, this is not my doing, this is a much better job. Mine's is sort of a hack job and basically because, well, not many people are going to use it, right, unless 
I don't know if people want a Tampico Bahamas scenery or anything like that. They're not too big and they're about 100 megabytes a piece so it's about 100 megabytes for Tampico, 100 megabytes for Bahamas. Uh, it's only got to be the northern part of the Bahamas as I land uh, SS-71 after dumping some of its kerosene to make landing a little bit easier. And eventually I remember to throttle down. But yes, so we properly landed uh, south of the location where we want to place this photo scenery because since I'm going to enable the photo scenery's colliders, if I land directly in the location, uh, it would destroy the SR-71. So we want to land south in this case or just away from it. So as I spawn the scenery, it's really tiny. But basically, it's just the northern end of the big island of the Bahamas, Grand Bahamas, I think. Uh, and I position it. The default scenery with um, real solar system at this resolution is not very bad. Uh, you can see it very closely matches the shape of the photo scenery there. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Unfortunately, the photo scenery had some clouds baked in. Uh, nothing I can do about that. And all we want is a runway here because we're launching from Tampico and we're landing the Orion carrier plane here. This means that it doesn't overfly any land along the way. It's just straight across the Gulf of Mexico like that. So again, the spawn point. And unfortunately, the runway marker is runway 33, but it's not quite pointed at uh, 330 degrees, which would be what that means. It's actually pointed more north than that. So Bahamas runway set us launch site and let's see if it works. And indeed the SS-71 spawns properly and I've got my launch sites created. So basically that was the goal and I guess it serves as somewhat of a minor tutorial as to the capabilities of Kerbal Constructs assuming you can get the menu to pop up that yeah, you need to. Uh, if control K doesn't work for you it may be that you're lacking some dependency or something like that. So keep that in mind, but yeah. Well, we will see it in action. I obviously have to test the Orion carrier plane launching out of Tampico and landing at the Bahamas, and there will be videos on that. Uh, well, hopefully just one video, depending on how difficult that ends up. Uh, so yeah, we will have to check that out. And then there are other things I need to prepare for my To Mars and Beyond series, which, have been, uh, which has been holding that series up, but we'll get to that later. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.